The Queen's Gambit is the best show on Netflix this year by far. And that's saying a lot because this show mainly deals with chess. So how could a show about chess be so compelling? And that's because of our main character, Beth Harmon. Because of Beth, the way she pulls you into her world, in this show, we dive deep into the psychology of Beth, what makes her tick, and how she walks the fine line between genius and madmen, how she balances insanity, addiction, loneliness, and loss of control, and she's able to channel that and become a world-class chess champion, and that's overcoming a lot, because in the first scene of the first episode, we find Beth climbing out of a tub covered in water, popping pills, drinking alcohol, running down the hall, making her way to a chess match. She's frantic, disorganized, confused, alone, even though there's someone in her bed. The fact that the person is sleeping alone in the bed and Beth was in the tub shows even when she has people around her, she's disconnected. So this opening scene is very beautiful in the fact that it sets up the character of Beth so well. Everything that makes her her is here. Isolation, drugs, alcohol, chest, frantic, aloneness, all of that together makes the character of Beth. But how do we get here? After we get that opening sequence, we have a flashback to when Beth's mother just killed herself. And that is the first form of Beth actually experiencing trauma. Her mom just killed herself and tried to kill her too. Could you imagine being nine years old and watching your mother crash the car with you in it and essentially ending her life while also ending yours? And prior to that, we find out that Beth's father abandoned them because of her mother's mental illness. And we know mental illness is genetic. However, because it's genetic doesn't necessarily mean you're going to inherit the same mental illness that your parent had. So Beth's whole entire life is her coming and grasping to terms with abandonment. Her mother abandoned her by killing herself. Her father abandoned them. Even when Beth gets adopted by Mr. and Mrs. Wheatley, Mr. Wheatley abandons the family and the mother ends up dying. So we see that her trauma is repeated. Father leaving, mother dying. And it's as though Beth, even though she gets close to people, she doesn't really let anyone in because the traumas have formed her life. Beth's entire worldview is framed around trauma. On top of having all that trauma, Beth doesn't necessarily have control of her life or control of the people around her. Again, her parents have left her, either by leaving physically or by dying. So she has no control over that. Even when her mom dies, she gets taken to the Methuen home where she has no control in going there. And you we see this in the way that she dresses. Early on, her mother made a dress for her and dressed her. When she gets to Methuen, the headmistress actually dresses her. When she gets adopted, Alma actually dresses her too. So even when it comes to her own agency, her own ability to have control, Beth doesn't necessarily have any. It's when she gets into chess, that's when she begins to gain control. And we see that once she starts winning at chess, one of the first things she starts buying when she gets money is clothes. She starts taking agency. She starts giving control of herself. And the first step is dressing herself in the fashions that she likes. It's subtle, it's small, but it shows us deeply what matters to Beth and how control is something that she's very much struggling for. And her buying dresses may seem like her just living lavishly, but it's a form of self-control. It's a form of control of her own environment. And one of the driving forces that made her fascinated by chess is Mr. Scheibel. Scheibel, the janitor of the Methuen home, taught her how to play chess and made her understand that on this chessboard, it's you and your opponent. You control the outcome. You have total control. It's her relationship with Scheibel, someone she's gotten close to, that taught her you can control this. When we're in the chess room and we're playing chess, this is all ours. This is our domain. She even reiterates that when she starts winning and she has her interview with Time Magazine. She talks about the fact that she doesn't see the pieces as standing for her parents. No, chess in itself, that blockade is her universe. It's her world. If she loses, it's her fault. She has control. And that's something she struggled with throughout the entire season is control. Beth wants to control the outcome. Beth wants to control who's around her, so much so that she has an avoidant personality. Beth's outlook on life is actually reflected in her attachment style because there are four major attachment styles and she leans toward the avoidant attachment style where she's disconnected, not too close, and doesn't want to warm up to people so early because, again, she suffered great loss throughout her years. Even when she started getting close to Mr. Scheibel, she got adopted and she had to leave him behind. So every time she gets close to someone, they end up leaving or she has to leave and she has no control over leaving or that person leaving. And that can make someone lonely. And Beth's whole character is a character who is very lonely throughout the series and chest is her one escape. It doesn't help that she got addicted to Librium at an early age. Now, when it comes to the drug Librium, 
it's more of a critique, not just of Beth's character, but as well as the 1960s. Because during that time, when it came to women and dealing with their own anxieties, their own role in society, doctors never really gave women the time of day to actually express themselves. They just gave them a tranquilizer and told them pretty much, here, take this, chill out, and shut the fuck up. That is normal. That is really how they dealt with women. So, of course, when she goes to Methuen and she's a frantic young girl whose mom just died, the first thing they do is give her drugs. What really helps her is when she takes the Librium, her mind gets clouded and she's able to block out all the extra noise, all the pain, all the trauma, and focus on chest. Her one thing that she can control, which is why she gets so addicted to it, because it allows her to see the chessboard on the ceiling and it gives her an added layer of control which is why she's addicted to it. It allows her mind to block out every other thing. And when she also gets addicted to alcohol, it drowns her sorrows, it drowns her isolation. It makes it that much more bearable because again, her traumas form who she is. So throughout the first season of Queen's Gambit, as we're following Beth's journey and we're seeing her into the world of competitive chess, as someone who also played competitive, damn, I'm gonna say this on YouTube. I'm gonna say this. I used to play trading card games competitively and I used to travel around the country doing that for prizes as well similar to the chess team not as complex and not as much great prizes when you have a passion of yours and the people around you don't share it it adds to your isolation but when you travel and meet new friends meet new people you get to indulge in something you like and you get to be with people of, of like mind so every time she goes to a chess match and she's surrounded by people watching her she feels at home she doesn't feel alone because there are people around her that actually care about what she's doing which is why she becomes obsessed first with beating Beltic, then with beating benny watts who is her greatest adversary up until borgoff because benny is also something that she aspires to be it's like two sides of the same coin if you will because when we switch to benny benny shares similar characteristics to beth hyper focused on chess lives alone and pretty much lives, breathes, and eats, sleeps, chest. He's not addicted to substances like Librium or alcohol. He's addicted to the fame. He's addicted to just himself. He's, he loves himself and he loves the fact that he's great at something and that draws people in. And he wants chest to be bigger because he wants to grow himself. He wants the fame. Beth wants the connection, but Benny wants the fame. And that's why their matchup is, to me, by far the more interesting rivalry that she has throughout the show even more so than Borgoff because her and Benny clashing and ultimately meeting up and her surpassing Benny shows that she's ascertained another level but throughout this and throughout Beth's journey she's meeting all these people who are actually framing her life Shaibo taught her how to play chess Jolene taught her how to take the Librium Mrs. Wheatley taught her how to be independent and control herself and Beltic taught her about the rules of chess and Benny took her over the top and she ultimately faces off against Borgoff. And it's at the end of the Queen's Gambit, that's when we've come to realize that because throughout the entirety of the season, Beth has always moved as though she was alone and had no one by her side. But when Jolene comes in the picture and then when she's playing Borgoff in the finals and all the friends she's made along the way help her, and that's even exacerbated by the fact that when she went back to Methuen and went to the basement, she saw that even though she thought she was alone, Shaibo always followed her journey. And that's when she broke down and she realized she's not alone. She's, she's not living the life that she thought she would be. And she's not going to end up like her mother. Because granted, while her mother did have a mental illness and it is hereditary, hers necessarily may not be that. Beth might be mildly OCD and she has addictive personality, which can be classified as a mental disorder but overall beth herself has friends has family has the support that she never thought she did and just watching her journey watching the roller coaster of emotions that she goes through and watching them make chess damn interesting really made queen's gambit by far the best show on netflix and we got to dive deep into the mind of beth and understand her traumas the way that she moved the way that she's reacting to society around her and the way that the 1960s as well as chess being predominantly male dominated game at the time formed her reality and at the end it's when she's able to actually let all that in and process that correctly without the drugs without the alcohol that she comes to realize that she's not really as alone as she thought but anyway guys that's my thoughts on beth i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below 
And if you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, binge on.